this is good. Okay, we're recording, yay! Okay, good, good. Hi everybody, I'm Donna Frasca, psychic medium for Spirit Chats with Donna Frasca. And today my guest is David Powell, who is a paranormal and PSI researcher and remote viewer. Exciting topics. This will probably go on for days if we can chat. <laughs> All right, David, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, glad to be here. Um, all right, these are, these are two topics, um, paranormal research, and what's, what's PSI research? What is, what is that? Psy research, like psychic functioning. Oh, psi research, okay, good. Um, you know what, I, if I could do my life over again, well, <laughs> I've probably done it a thousand times, million centuries already. Um, I love the paranormal world, and um, just to do research, I always wanted to be a detective, you know, because I have the kind of mind that like, likes to dig into that stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so is that how your mind works as well? Obviously, if you're into, in this field. Tell me a little, little bit more about yourself. Well, I, I actually, my sister had had some experiences as a kid um, with spirits and stuff, and I, I had always had an interest in it. Um, and I got into, I, I got into consciousness ever since I was a teenager. Wow. Uh, exploring it, out of body experiences, astral projection, um, and then which got me into remote viewing later on down the road. But uh, that's how, how I kind of got into it. Um, I wanted to see what consciousness was all about, what we could do with it, what its limits were. It was fascinating to me. That's a huge topic. You know what, just to let everybody know, um, David is a uh, Facebook friend of mine. And I think we have a lot of mutual friends under, you know, similar uh, like-mindedness. Um, but I know when I have something, you know, unusual happen, you know, in my neck of the woods, I always instant message David because I know that, you know, based on his background, he can kind of connect or, you know, help me put pieces together or whatnot. So thank you again, David, for, for being there in, in cyberspace for me. Um, a yeah. lot of times we talk about lucid dreams and my gosh, I just had a, a, another one the other day. This past week, I don't know. Have you noticed this past week has been very bizarre in the paranormal world? And and uh, have you have you felt that too? I've seen a little bit of that. You know, I I don't know what it what it has to do with. It could be something to do with this this coronavirus scare. I'm not sure, but yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you, well, you know what? That's actually a good point. Uh, you know, I think there's a lot of if you're if you're hypersensitive like like I am. Um, you know, you pick up on these things and, and, you know, there's a lot of fear in, in, you know, the world now and it, it's, uh, you know, kind of bumps into you, but I think it awakens something in, in our, um, mind or subconscious or consciousness, whichever you want to say, um, that can help compute or make sense of what we're feeling, you know, Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's just, uh, it's crazy stuff. But um, let's talk about the paranormal world. So, did you say you saw a few, few spooky things, or how how's that work? I'll be honest. I've never. I, I've always had an interest in it. My my sister had some experiences that she, you know, would swear by. You know, as kids, and I was almost jealous, maybe a little bit, that all this stuff was happening to people because I always had a sense um, that there was just more going on, just beyond the spectrum of what we were seeing. And um, I never had had any strange otherworldly experiences personally, honestly, until I got into remote viewing and then weird things started happening. But, uh, but um, I, I noticed a lot of connections because I, I was researching paranormal, uh, psi abilities, um, remote viewing, and, and I saw cross connections, you know, and that's what, that's what interested me was, you know, I see a connection here from a totally different aspect of this world. You know, these guys are experiencing a similar thing, you know, and uh, neither, neither modality kind of reacted with each other on the subject, but I see it all the time. There's connections. There's connections. Do you have a pet down there, a cat or? The no. Oh, I thought, I thought I saw you pick, because whenever I chat, you know, I have five cats and they're already looking to jump on me. They're like, oh, what's mommy talking, who's mommy talking to? And they're, they're just, <laughs> one was just sleeping here and she, she hopped down. Okay, so um, you mentioned remote viewing. So just explain that a little bit, you know, for the people who are not familiar with uh, what remote viewing is. Sure, remote viewing is a modality of psi functioning where 
you can remotely pick up impressions of a target that you're completely blind to. So a tasker would basically write on a piece of paper, target number 4316, let's say for instance, uh, the Pyramids of Giza. Now that, per that tasker would not tell the, the viewer what the target is. They would get the, the four digit number or whatever number, which is which the, the, the number is just a focal point in which to get to the target. Yeah. Okay. So the numbers really don't mean anything. It's just basically a, a way to, you know, focus on what you're trying to do. So you're blind to the target completely. Are you, are you formally trained as a remote viewer? Did Not I, yet. I, I, I've, I've been experimenting with it for the last couple of years, read the yeah. manuals. But yeah. I'm going to be going to Lori's class, actually, um, come July, August. That would, would be Lori Williams, by the way, if, if people are, you know, are interested. Correct. Yeah. She's a very good, very teacher for remote viewing. Yeah. Um, so you basically, I mean, I, I just, I mean, I would love to, um, you know, be formally trained in remote viewing as well. But I just did um, just some research on my own based on, you know, what everybody puts out there um, on cyberspace and manuals and whatnot and, and uh, you know, practice as these numbers are fascinating because I, I was never sure what those what is it usually like six six letter numbers or so i was always wondered if they meant anything or they were just random numbers you know? they're just random when i when i was i did i did a, a pretty stringent experiment with my wife and a friend i basically strong armed them into helping me out i was trying to you know I wanted them to experience this because I was experiencing myself. I'd have my wife set up a target, blind to it, and I would get all these impressions. And the, the numbers really don't mean anything. I, we would use four-digit codes. And I, I used a four-digit because it was easier for me to focus on a four-digit number mm -hmm. during an extended remote viewing session rather than a six-digit or an no. eight-digit. So we experimented with extended remote viewing, which was where you would listen to uh, a hemi-sync track put a blindfold on and you would basically put your body to sleep um, while keeping your mind super awake and impressions would started to come. And then after a while, by location started happening. Oh my gosh. That, that, I mean, that's, that's so my world. First of all, when you admit, when you said blindfold, I do, I use blindfolds a lot for meditations or, or readings. Cause when you close your eyes, I mean, I'm highly clairvoyant. So, but when you close your eyes, with a with a blindfold, it, it's it's just like um, it's a whole nother realm. It's really odd, you know. Yeah. And at, at times when I have a blindfold on, that um, I find myself with you know just looking around because I feel like I'm in space. You know, if I look down, it's like I see I. I mean, it's, it's blackness, but I could feel like a whole realm around me. So, so often I'm like looking around and it's really important as a um, clairvoyant, remote viewer, you know, just in, 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 you know, my two cents is to, a lot of people just look forward, always, well, I've had experiences where, you know, I needed to look behind me because, you know, the world is not just in front of us, it's all around us. So mm -hmm. always like, look around, there's all kinds of cool things that, uh, you know, you can sense behind you and stuff. You know, but the blindfold is super cool. And, um, you know, I need to read more on, on remote viewing because you mentioned by location, which is, which is, you know, super amazing. Now, again, for people who are not sure what by location is, can you just, you know, tell a little bit about that? Yeah. So what, what ends up happening is when you're remote viewing, you have a, you have a, they call it um, an aperture of awareness. Okay. So basically you're looking through a, a small scope and as you're moving as you start to get impressions of the target, the the aperture starts starts to widen. So you're getting more and more bits of information. Uh -huh. So let's say let's say you get a target and it's the um, the Hoover Dam, you may start to get impressions of a dense structure wall. You know you may actually perceive an image of a wall and stuff. And that was one of my first by locations actually was the Hoover Dam. So I start to get these impressions, and then all of a sudden. I'm seeing people walk around, you know, you're just wow. there. Um, and it's one of the most amazing experiences I've ever, ever seen. And, and, and that kind of really hooked me. So extended remote viewing is where my passion's at. I, I, I'm going through controlled remote viewing just to get back to extended. Well, I mean, I, that is, I have to tell everybody the, the little experiment that we did about the Hoover Dam just what, mm -hmm. two weeks ago or whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I, I sent David a um, private message about, I don't know what it was, a lucid dream, or I, I don't even know, because we, we go back and forth, you know, kind of, you know, quite often. And it was, it was in the morning, and I was in the middle of making eggs, and we started talking about uh, remote viewing or something. And we're like, want, want to practice? Like, sure, <laughs> send me some numbers. So as, as David was sending me some, some numbers, um, you know, I'm making soft boiled eggs and tea and going about my business. Then all of a sudden, all these images are going, I'm like, darn it, it started already. I didn't even have these numbers and these images are going through my head. So I just stopped making the eggs. And, and you know, the first thing I saw was a, like a semi-circle, and I just wrote down words. I'm like, I, I don't know how to do this remote viewing stuff. I'm not trained, but I, I trust what I see 110%. It's never led me wrong. So I said to Dave, I said, you know what? I'm just going to just jot down some words, what I see, what I feel. He said, yeah, sure. So I'm running down, you know, like I because I, I, I saw this image in my head and it was, this, like I said, concrete, semicircle, cave, water, you know, and I was going on and on and on. And one of the last things I felt was I couldn't breathe. You know, and I felt like I was, um, I didn't say I was underwater, but I'm like, I can't breathe. And I'm like, I'm done. It's <laughs> like, I can't breathe. I'm done. <laughs> and I find out the, um, the target was indeed the Hoover Dam. And if, yeah. you, and if you, that was super cool, by the way. And um, my, my soft boiled eggs came up perfect. So here I am, remote viewing, <laughs> whatever, and cooking yeah. at the same time. It was perfect. Um, but uh, so clairvoyance, I guess, would play a huge role in remote viewing, wouldn't it? Absolutely. And, you know, and I, so much of remote viewing, you know, it's, it, it, the controlled remote viewing is very structured. You know, you're, when you watch somebody do controlled remote viewing, it's like watching someone do homework. I mean, they're so, sitting so there's like regular room. remote viewing and then there's controlled and there's extended, right? Well, there's controlled remote viewing is, is, um, that's where you're writing on a piece of paper. Extended is where, that's where, what I kind of have a passion for is when you're, you, you're, basically getting into a meditative state, the hypnagogic state, yeah. and your right brain, you know, with the hemisync kind of takes over. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when that happens, you, you know, there, we have some kind of attachment to this body. I, I don't, I don't want to say inside of it. I don't know, but there's definitely an attachment. Yeah. Yeah. And once we kind of let go of that and relax, um, intention seems to have, something to do with it task or intention um your intention you know i would say that you know people that haven't even the vague interest in what remote viewing is um if they they would put the little bit of effort into it to take an hour out of your day and, and do this and have right. someone set up a target for you yeah. i would be willing to say that they're probably going to have you know the same experiences that myself my wife my you know that we set this up because it didn't take much of an effort, to be honest with you. And what I realized was, is that I could do it. Anybody could do it. I was just going to say, so anybody can be a remote viewer on some level. Correct. Correct. That's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what I found is that when you said, you know, you put yourself in a meditative state, I found that being in the bathtub, I guess the water is a huge conductor. I mean, I can't, I can't even tell you how many experiences on, you know, some crazy levels I had while in the tub between visions, insights, downloads. I mean, I, I, I could write a whole novel, a whole book on just that. As a matter of fact, um, years ago, I wanna say about four years ago, and this, you had mentioned Rory Williams earlier, and um, this is so bizarre, because um, about four years ago, I started you know, being attracted to this group of like-minded people, and I'm like, remote feeling, what is that? And I just saw these people, I said, okay, that's cool, they're nice, nice, nice. And I found out a little bit about what Lori Williams does, or did, does. And I'm in the bathtub, just thinking about it. My like, wow, this is super cool. Then I, and I just went about my, my bath, my night, whatever. But then I started seeing images in my head. And I'm like, and I, I see like a, um, a lot of concrete and arches and brown and people, a table and things that were on a table. I was in somebody's kitchen and it, it was so good because it happened like that. And I'm looking around and, um, and I was, I, I felt connected to Lori Williams. And I, and I, and I said, Lori, I said, this is crazy. You know, she probably doesn't even remember this because this was like, like I said, four years ago. But I said, you know, I got these images and, you know, I'm directed to, to tell this to you. And she said, and she sent me like four or five pictures of the inside of her home, which I, and she was having a class at the time. And I described it almost to the T. 
And I'm yeah. like, I, I should say, I should say those pictures, but I didn't, you know, but to me it was like, you know, it, it was, it was not, I don't want to say it's like not a big deal because it happened so often, but I should have saved the pictures because it was kind of cool. But it was, I'm like, what kind of house is this? I mean, arches and brown and a lot of concrete and weird angles and that. She's like, that would be my house. I'm like, oh my God, that's so cool. <laughs> but, um, you know what? And again, I mean, like you said, if, if you could do it, if I could do it, anybody can, you know, so they could just, you know, but I would recommend sitting in the tub and relaxing and because that's just a, because your mind can relax. So I guess a relaxed mind has a lot to do with it as well, I would think. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. you're not the first person to tell me that, in a sense. I mean, I've had uh, uh, one of my mentors, uh, Sandra Boyd Kaminsky, she, you know, she swears by channeling in the tub. You know, she just gets in that mode. Um, Absolutely. If something happens. And, and she's, she has sporadic out of bodies all the time. Um, but yeah, there's definitely something there. And I, and I have to believe that there's a part of me that, that, that believes that a lot of sensitivity in most people is kind of um, indoctrinated out of most people. You know, you, you hear people say all the time, oh, stop being so sensitive. Stop being so sensitive. I know. That's, you know, that, that, that's the, to me, that's like the, the preemptive function. Uh, you know, you're just, it's not a bad thing to be sensitive. No. Um, I mean, it, it can be. It can be an overload. Sure. You have to know how to, you know control that but um i mean gosh if we can't rely on our senses then we're, we're in big trouble you know yeah we have to be able to sense fear or good things bad things and you know when to make a left when to make a right and trust that gut instinct solar plexus you know absolutely yeah. and, and i have to say that i think that just by remote viewing alone something about it makes you more cognizant of your intuition by practicing it um and it's not like you become more, you know, psychic or anything. It's just that you become more noticeable, aware of the intuition that's been talking to you the whole time. Yeah. But you're constantly pushing it away. You know, your analytical mind kicks in and then you want to, you know, uh, you know, forget that. So I tend to trust my intuition far more than I used to. Good. That's good. I mean, it's the same as mediumship. Um, oh my gosh, did I, did I just see, you know, like a person go by? Did I just feel this? Did I just feel that tap on my, my back? And, you know, a lot of people say, oh, it's just a nerve or dust. Or, no, it's not. In some cases yeah. it is. But um, if, if, you, if you see it, you know, I have, I have what I call it, um, well, it's a spiritual checklist. But whenever I see something or feel something, I send it through a, a checklist. That would be me. You know, I am that tool. What did it feel like? What did it smell like? What did it sound like? You know, go through all those senses. And if it's cool, then I move forward. But I, I always debunk everything. You know, I mean, going yeah. back to the paranormal world, um, you know, uh, my my life, this spooky life or woo-woo, whatever you want to call it, started when I was 10. And um, so I've been around it my entire life. I don't know any better. This is this is what, I mean, I've seen ghosts and spirit people and, and you know, weird things, but I look at it and I'm like, all right, are you cool? I run it through my checklist. Some So some are angels, some are people, of course, but every now and then, you, get, you know, there's something that comes by that is not too cool. And one day I'm working at my office here and right here, I, I felt something and it's where those, you, you have to be sensitive. You have to be able to trust that. And I feel something here. I'm like, I went through my checklist. I'm like, yeah, no, this is not, I'm not, I'm not saying it's a demon. I don't, I don't, I just don't believe in that. So I do believe there's troublemakers and different things because i've seen them mm -hmm. so i just happened to have a spray of uh sage and salt and it went I'm like hit the road <laughs> and yeah it was gone you know yeah um but again going back to remote viewing um it's interesting that with these numbers you can come up with all this information and you have to trust your senses for that it's like oh my gosh you know i i, I see these numbers you know and I just saw the color blue. I see a boat. No, oh, no, it's my imagination. How do you decipher from your imagination to actually, you know, what you see is, is legit? How do you that? That's a big, big, you know, a thing. How do you discern? Um, I can tell you that surprise is a big telltale sign. Um, yeah. Genuine surprise. True. Uh, yes. in, ex in extended, you know, it's, it's a very uh, immersive modality of extended, uh, of remote viewing. You know, when you're doing controlled remote viewing, you know, you're probing the target with your, your pen with, you know, which is an ideogram, just a sketch or like a, a squiggly line, but you're getting, it's like, you're taking a taste of the target. You're getting a little, just a little piece of it, a little feel of it. When you're doing extended, you're immersed in it, you know? So it's, it's a very, it, it's a much more, um, like you're there feeling, um, 
So, but, but, but as far as like uh, the controlled remote viewing, you know, there's times where I'll be, you know, I'm doing impressions and, and I'm getting all these like soft impressions. Then I'll get something really dense, like, or, or, or vice versa. And I'll be like, that eh, really? You know, I'll doubt it, you know, in yeah. my mind. But I'll, but I'll write it down anyway, because that's what I got. You know, if it's right, it's right, it's wrong, it's wrong. And then it turns out that ends up being some of my best data. Yeah. You, you know, and it's, and it's, and, and like, even with extended, you know, I'll be just seeing, you know, on the, on the dark, my eyes are closed. I'm looking out in a black pool and all of a sudden an image starts coming in, which, which to me appears almost like a photo negative, but moving, you know, like actually moving. That's what, that's what it, it looks like to me. Uh, wow. Um, is that what those images are on that, on that uh, whiteboard behind you? Some remote viewing? Yeah, this yeah. is actually, this is a controlled remote viewing practice session my wife did because I'm teaching my wife to get, at least to get one through four. She's amazingly good at it, much more natural at it than I am. I, you I know, know I must good. say, I think, you know, women, sorry guys, I have a little upper edge. I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah, <laughs> the, the woman's intuition. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think. A little bit. <laughs> she uh she has been you know and it's it really bugs me because um i have to beg her to do it you know she has so little interest in it but oh she's gosh. so very good at it but and every time she does a session though she's like and it's like <laughs> yeah that's what i'm talking about you know i'm you know she has an amazing so i'd love for her to pursue it like yeah. i'm pursuing it because she has such a natural talent for it but what are you gonna do <laughs> just just keep at it just keep going and going and going um, yeah does i wonder if this is kind of a silly question but um i'm highly dyslexic so numbers are just you know you know there would be a five and a four and i just can't see it you know mm -hmm. um which was which was bad in my my other my dual career as an interior designer i specialize in color so a lot of a lot of my clients i'm like okay that would be blue color you know four five six and they get the color, they're like, Donna, this is like orange. I'm like, oh my gosh, what number did I give you? But um, I, you know, so the numbers, like, I just can't see them. So in remote viewing, the numbers clearly don't mean anything. I mean, like we said earlier, they just are, so it doesn't matter if you, you see a number or see it backwards, it doesn't matter, right? Correct, it's just a, a focal point, right. uh, an intention, a set of intention. Like uh -huh. I want you to look at this and this just gives it a okay. label or an address. Interesting. But you know, actually talking about numbers, um, and you and I chatted about this before on Facebook, lucid dreaming, right? Mm -hmm. And you're a lucid yes. dreamer as well? Yes. This, this is such a cool, cool topic. Um, again, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you how uh, numbers uh, come into this in just a minute. I think about two days ago during the full moon, of course, um, you know, I had this lucid dream, one of many. I've been lucid dreaming since I was 10 years old. So it's like, okay, these are my dreams. What are you freaking out for? This is, this is just, but no, not everybody could lucid dream apparently. So eventually um, I've, I've discovered on lucid dreaming. And again, for you know, people who are not sure what lucid dreaming is, it's, um, it's my definition is like when you're in a dream and you're aware of being in a dream. And, you know, once you know that you're in a dream, you can control it. You can start it, stop it. You could be, because there were times like, yeah, no, I don't want to do this dream. I don't want to be on the beach and somewhere. I want to go horseback riding. Then you can change it. You know, you can mm -hmm. jump off cliffs. You don't get hurt. You can walk through fire. You can meet people. You can do all kinds of wild things. You can fly. Flying is super cool. And I've discovered that over time, um, as you become a more um, advanced lucid dreamer, your flight gets higher and higher and higher. Are you a lucid dreamer as well? Do, do you? I am. Yeah. Um, but it, it's rare you know what happens is uh, i will it, it doesn't happen often but i will wake up in a lucid dream and it's such it, it takes me by such surprise you yeah. know and, and i'm such a a, a a scaredy cat to begin with apparently so i'll realize this is a very weird thing you know i'm involved with and i'll and usually not always i mean sometimes i'll explore a little bit in that but usually i'll be so freaked out by it that i wake myself up yeah, because I'm able to do that. And when I'm lucid and I'm in, a, find myself in a weird position or something's not quite right, uh -huh. I'll realize I'm in a dream and just out of like pure instinct, I you know wake myself yeah. up out of it. Yeah. Now, have you been dreaming your entire life or just recently? No, I'd say most of my life. Most yeah. of my life. Yeah. Uh, but it would be just out of out of the blue. You know, I've woken up in just some some bizarre environments. You know, and I'm like this. And that's what it feels like to me is like waking up, like I'm waking up in the dream and all of a sudden I'm in this strange environment. 
Yeah, and it is frightening. Lucid dreaming can be extremely frightening, but it could be really cool too. You can fight like the, you know, the monsters and the demons. And like I said before, you could jump off cliffs and, and whatnot. Years ago, decades ago, um, I remember in a lucid dreaming dream, um, I was able to fly, but it was just a few feet off the ground. I'm like, wow, this is cool. But over years, like I said earlier, you know, as I could fly, it got higher and higher and higher. So now I can, I, you know, in a lucid dream, you know, actually I did that once. I'm like, tonight I am setting my intention to dream. I want to see the world. Boom. Yeah. Simple as that. I went to sleep that night and I was, I don't know, in Europe somewhere, but I was hovering just right over the rooftops and I was able to look inside the windows. Cause again, you know, like I said earlier, I'm an interior designer, my other career, I just wanted to see what color they painted their walls. <laughs> so, and, and, it, and at Christmas time, cause I wanted to see the decor. You know, I wasn't being a creeper. I just wanted to see the decor. But my my intent was so strong that night. And intent is key to absolutely. I, I was just gonna say that. Yeah, absolutely. You're 100 right. Intent uh, is so strong. Mm -hmm. it, and and it can be cultivated. I mean, these things can be cultivated. And and like you said, uh, attention. And and it's and this is another connection thing. Uh, lucid dreaming, remote viewing. Well, intention, intention is key. It is key, number one. I just got chills when you said that. Um, oh my gosh, where do I start? Um, okay, now going back to uh, the lucid dream, uh, then I wanna talk about bilocation and um, you know intention being key. I'm just gonna write this down so I don't forget. Um, the lucid dream that I had just the other day, and again, it's a full moon, being highly sensitive, hypersensitive, the full moon, you know, each full moon has a different pull. Sometimes it's stronger and it, it you know, it's, it, uh, it's havoc. And sometimes, you know, we don't, I don't even feel it. But this past one, just a um, couple, couple, four days ago or so, was very strong for me. I couldn't sleep. You know, I had tried, one night I was just staring at the ceiling all night long. So um, I was tired. So not only being tired is key to getting into a lucid dream, I found out over the years, you have to be exhausted. If you are to the point of exhaustion, whether you work too much physically or mentally, that's a trigger for um, lucid dreaming. Yeah. So not having um, slept well one night, um, I'm already tired. Um, to the point of I'm um, being grouchy. I don't. I'm, I'm usually not a grouchy person. <laughs> so um, I'm like, oh God, I just I just want to sleep tonight. So that night, um, there you go, lucid dream. I was beyond exhausted. And what happened in this dream, and this has not happened before, so again, there's different levels of lucid dreaming. I, I'm sure of this, that I am in this lucid dream. Um, you know, it was, it was some BS, you know, I'm like, oh my God. But the whole um, dream was shaking from side to side. Um, that has never happened to me before. So it was a little, um, you know, it was like, oh my gosh, why is everything shaking? I'm like, I know I'm dreaming, but why? I know the shaking is important and it means something. I just haven't found that out yet. But the, 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 everything was moving from side to side, like an earthquake. And, and there's people in the dream and they're like, what's going on? Where am I? I'm like, can, can you see this too? They're like, yeah. I'm like, uh, and then also my son pops into the dream and um, I told everybody, okay, guys, do me a favor. Everybody um, take, I said to my son, I go, Vinny, when is your birthday? He's like, um, he's like, I, I don't know. Numbers. Numbers do not work in lucid dreams. So I said to everybody else, and everybody was scared and confused. I'm like, okay, guys, take your cell phone out and dial something. Dial the police. Dial 911. They picked up their phone. They couldn't do it. I'm like, oh, my gosh. We are all in a lucid dream. And now the yes. person, everyone was like, what? I'm like, okay, but this is different because there's other people here in the same, it was like between realms or something. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But I've yeah. never experienced that before. It was shaking, and which, mm -hmm. which led me to believe that you know I was bouncing in between realms somewhere, but other mm -hmm. people were there as well. I don't know. David, what's your opinion on that? Um, I think it's very, I think it's very possible. Because, I mean, because, you know, when, when I hear about astral projection, you know, I, I've, I've done some research where these people are meeting up in these realms and, you know, hanging out <laughs> in some kind of like a, a spiritual type form. I think all of this, Donna, honestly, is just science we don't understand yet. Yeah. That's what I honestly believe. I believe this is going to be the last frontier of scientific exploration is human consciousness. Um, 
and and like I said, if a guy like myself and grab a couple of guinea pigs and, and can mess around with this and have some degree of success, yeah. then I mean, there's definitely like something there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've seen too much now to not really wholeheartedly accept it because, you know, life is experiential in nature anyway, you know what I mean? And, um, some of the stuff I wouldn't believe unless I had witnessed it myself. I mean, it's just, that's just the way it is. Um, and from what I have seen, I mean, like I said, I, I, I was having these experiences and I taught my wife, I taught my friend and they seemed even better at it than me. <laughs> you know? So, um, it's amazing. Um, but yeah, that, that's, uh, as far as the numbers go, you know, and, and my sister actually asked me when I saw it, she was gonna, that was going to be on your show. And her first, her, you know, her first thing was amazing. Hey, could she give me the lotto numbers? It was, that was her first remark. Oh my I gosh, said. I get that so often. Guys, do you think I would not be a millionaire by now if it could be possible? And I, and I immediately laughed. I said, why do you think she would be able to give you the lotto? I said, Leah, and that's her, her name. And I, I go, um, there's a reason why numbers are so difficult for people to get a, 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 a handle on because numbers aren't really anything. Or a concept, a construct. Yeah. They're just an I ideal. You can't get an impression of a number. You know what I mean? A number is not going to give you anything. Right. So that's why associative remote viewing is what it is, where you have to relay everything to an object or a taste or whatever to be able to, uh, you know, to try and, and work the lotto like that or what, whatever, whatever you want to do. You know what? Um, I find uh, for a while there I was doing uh, reading on lucid dreams because I'm so trying to find people. Um, who I can share my world with. Because once I start talking about lucid dreams and, and you know, now remote viewing and some of the things I experience, there's very few people out there, you know, who um, experience that. Or, or when you share these things, they look at you like you're crazy, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, earlier when- but they could be and they may not remember it. You know what I mean? You don't, I mean, by the time they wake up, they may not have recall of what they had done that prior night. Yeah, but you know what? Some of these experiences that we've had, that I've had, um, you can't forget. You know, like, yeah. for example, the bilocation. Had to, I mean, this is the most bizarre thing that I've ever had happen to in my life. And again, earlier, like we said, intention is the number one tool. Um, I can describe intention um, to activate a bilocation. Um, it's, it, it, I can describe it as there's a pool. And, um, you know, there's a, a, a toddler, a young child, by the edge of the, a very deep pool. And as a parent, you see that child walking towards the pool and about to fall in. That urgency that you have to run and save that child or to, you know, run and do something, that intention, that urgency is what triggers a, a lot of this stuff. Um, I'm going to give you an example of the bilocation. Um, that I experienced that um, to this day, I still have not met anybody who, who shares a similar experience. So um, it's a lonely world. <laughs> it's, it's exciting because I know it's possible because I did it without even thinking. But come on, guys, reach out to me. You know, if you could buy locate, let's get together. You know, there's a yeah. lot of things that we can do by, by location. Anyway, um, I was, uh, where am I? North Carolina, Charlotte, Charlotte North Carolina. And um, my daughter was three hours away um, in college. And I was in the city celebrating uh, my husband's birthday. And she sends me a text. This is my cat, Walter. He always jumps up when I'm chatting. Um, she sends me a text. Uh, Mom, there's a, there's a ghost in my dorm. Fix it. And I'm, I'm like, Are you kidding me? I go, Caroline, do you know that I am three hours away? In Charlotte, what do you want me to do? She's like, I don't know. I'm tired. Just fix it. And I go, well, well, what's happening? She says, water's going on and off. Doors are opening. You know, things are all messed up. I just know there's there's a there's a ghost in my dorm. Please fix it. I'm tired. And that was it. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. So I knew I had about 20 minutes um, before we were to leave. We were in a hotel before we got to go out to dinner. Um, husband was in the shower. I'm like, all right, he's going to be in there for a while. You know, it takes longer in the shower than I do because I had 20 minutes. I'm like, okay. It's a ghost in my dorm. I need, I mean, I was mad, you know, so I had that, I had anger inside me. I'm like, who's messing with my kid? Does a ghost, because, you know, ghosts are people. They're not demons. They're not the boogeyman. They're just people, you know, yeah. some, you know, and, and, you know, as a medium, I've, I've met, met, 
Uh, that's true. I've met, you know, these spirit people who are super nice. Some are troublemakers. So I'm like, I'm like, who is messing with my kid in the dorm? So I'm like, Ugh, this is, this is not, not. So here we have that intention, that urgency. So I sat down on the bed, closed my eyes. And I just said, okay, I need to be in that dorm now. And that urgency. Next thing I know, I am in her dorm room with my back up against her, her door. And here I am, you know, one minute my eyes are closed, next minute my eyes are open, I'm in her room and I'm looking around and I'm like, I'm like where am I? I'm like, oh my God, I'm in her dorm room, back up against the door. And that's another key. These are portals, but by location. So here you have intention and you have doors, okay? Um, and this has happened to me a couple times. And, and again, the doorways are, um, it, it's, a, it's, another, it's another key, but but not always, so they, it's a little tricky. So anyway, once for, for a couple of seconds, I'm like, wow, I'm in her dorm, this is really, and I'm looking around and I see you know, her sleeping in her bed, I see her lights, her tapestries, all the clothes on her floor. I'm like, really, pick up this mess? I'm like, okay, I'm not here to, to yell at her because her dorm's a mess. I'm like, okay, where is this ghost? So I'm looking around, looking around, and over her closet, I see like a gray mass. I'm like, okay, I, I, I see you. I go, dude, what are you doing? Because I knew it was a guy because I went through that checklist. I'm like, okay, is it scary? No. Is it a demon? No. You know, it was, it was totally innocent and it felt like a male. So what it was, was a male um, previous uh, student who passed away, who was in that dorm and he just wanted to be a little creeper and cause him tra you know, trouble. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, dude, I go, first of all, you're not allowed here. This is not cool. You're a creeper. You know, that's inappropriate. Um, I'm her mom. And uh, you need to get out. But before you go, and I'm having a I'm having a chat with this this spirit person while um part of my body is in the dorm, and the other part of me is three and a half hours away in Charlotte in a hotel. Mm -hmm. um, but my focus was on the spirit person, and I said, okay, um, you know, before I send you packing, I wrapped them up in pink pink flowers, perfume, all kinds of girly stuff. I'm like, you, you need to go to your happy place. You cannot go to any place by this dorm. You need to go to your little light, little happy place. If I have to come back again, I'm not going to be this nice. And so, um, and then it just, I, I felt like it went away. I'm like, okay, that was cool. Never that, did that before. So again, I had my back. I stayed up against this door the whole time. Looked at my daughter. She's in bed sleeping. I'm like, okay, my job's done. I'm going to go to dinner tonight. And I just, next thing I know, I'm in back in the hotel, open up my eyes. I'm like, that was really cool. But totally, you know, it's like, okay, you know, husband's out of the shower. Let's go have a good time. Never thought about it until the next day. Um, you know, my, oh, I just sent my, my, my daughter a note. It's okay, ghost is gone. And um, so the next day I said to her, I said, hey, if you had to guess where this little ghosty was, where would you say it would be? She's like, up over my closet. I'm like, yeah, well, it's not there anymore. But, you know, here... Never did that before, but intention. You know, I was, like I said, in my gut, I'm like, darn it. You know, I'm so angry that a spirit person is perving in my daughter's dorm room. You know, I was so, so angry. So guys, if you want to try bi bilocation or any of these things that we chatted about, you know, you can't just say, well, I think I want to try it. It's, it's probably not going to work. But for some way, shape, or form, you have to have that ur urgency, you know, that intent. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would even say, you know, I even suspected that when we were experimenting with this, you know, because I wanted them to experience this so much myself, mm -hmm. and, you know, tasking them these things. I tended, my gut tells me that that also it was like stacking batteries. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I wanted, you know what I mean? As much yeah. as that person wanted to, yeah. to, you know, be there. I just, I tend to feel like even the tasker by my intention of wanting them even made it more prevalent. At least I, that's what my gut tells me, but we don't know for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's just, a, just an amazing phenomenon. What do you say really. earlier about, um, you know, when we do a lucid dream to bring other people into the dream? I've been, I've been wanting to do this for years. It's hard to find somebody to play with me. You know, say, hey guys, you want to do something fun? Cause you know. It could be like crazy, but um, I'll, I'll eventually find find a you know a person and uh, you know be able to um, you know uh, tap into to that range of all right. You know, I've never done this before, but I'm going to try it um, because again, going back to dreaming. Um, I mean, 
it, it, it takes it up another level where, um, again, I had another lucid dream that I actually saw a person. And this, this, this makes me believe that like we're here now, but maybe there's other people in a lucid dream who are looking at us now. We don't know it just yet. Based hmm. on the fact that I had this one dream where um, I saw, I don't know even who this person was, but there was a person in my dream and I actually touched this person and I felt warmth on my hand. I'm like, I'm like, oh my God. And, and I had somebody next to me. I couldn't see the person, but it was like a guide saying, you do know that you can touch that person. That person is alive and not in your dream. You're dreaming, but you do know you can touch that person. I'm like, okay, I can hear somebody speaking to me. Don't know who it is. I'm going to touch this person in the dream. So I touched mm -hmm. this person and I felt the skin. I felt it warm. The person didn't react, but I'm like, oh my God, that's a little too creepy. And out, out of the dream I went. Yeah, um, yeah. So, um, you know, I mean, have you had, uh, again, you know what, what, I, what I want to ask you though, um, before you do any remote viewing, is there any prep that you have to do? I mean, a lot of mediums, they protect, you know, they put a bubble around them because they're fear-based. I don't do that. But is, you know, if you remote view and you, and you, you know, put your consciousness or, or whatever into another space and time, is there something that you have to do to um, guard yourself or protect? Is there anything that you do, any prep work that you do? Uh, for me, I mean, and this, this is, you know, some, depending on your methodology of remote viewings, you know, some will claim this or that or the other, you know, but I, I meditation certainly doesn't hurt. Um, I found that, um, when I go into controlled remote viewing, um, where you're, you know, wide awake, I find it helps to be looking forward to it. Like, I, you know, I, I want to, because here's what I found is if you're some, if you're, if you're bored, if your mind is bored, your subconscious is definitely bored. Yeah. So you kind of want to be in the, in the mood of, of doing it. Um, you know, you want, you, you want your senses to be as sharp as they, as they could be, you know, you don't want to be having a drink or two because you're, you're trying to pick up on a signal. That's just so, so subtle. Yes. You know, it's a very subtle signal. So you really want to be, you know, listening for it, I guess. Or, or, um, but as far as the, the extended, I, I had already read books on how to hypnotize myself and, um, and the hemisync really took that into the next level. Um, cause that's basically what you're doing. You're going into like a meditative state, but it took me, it would take me like 45 minutes to get to that place. It would take really? me that long. Really? Uh, but, but, but my, but my wife, my friend, you know, take them 25 minutes. You know, I'd be getting a phone call 25 minutes later. Hey, I saw this, I saw that, you know, and I'm like, already? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know what? Um, test yourself because there were times, uh, you know, going back to my mediumship when I, did, you know, do readings that, um, you know, when I first started out the day before I would start prepping, I wouldn't eat meat. I wouldn't drink, you know, I, you know, I, I would wear white or whatever, you know, I would, I, I would never wear white. It's not my color, but uh, this is cream, by the way. It's not white. <laughs> um, I mean, there was, there was rituals that I did thinking that I needed to do this. And I did that for a while and it worked because it's, again, it's intention. Um, but there were times when um, I had to do a reading really fast. Um, you know, somebody was in, in distress, whatever. And she, and I get a text. I have 15 minutes. I need a reading now. I'm like 15 minutes. Okay. I have to agree to this. I have to stop what I'm doing, process payment, give a reading and, you know, give you the results in 15 minutes. I'm like, you know what? All world is all about um, stepping out of our comfort zone and boundaries. You don't know until you try. You'd be amazed what your mind, body and spirit can do when you use it. So um, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to help this woman. So I dropped everything. Close my eyes. I'm like, okay, spirit people, in now. I need you now. Guides, angels, whoever. Now, once you know what, I was done in 10 minutes, and it was a pretty darn amazing reading. 10 minutes. Time mm -hmm. to spare. But again, a ten intention um, yeah. is key. In, in, yeah. in all these, in paranormal world, remote viewing, uh, lucid dreaming, mediumship, it's all intention. You know? And I find that interesting, that there is that connection there. Because, uh, you know, it just, just, it just, that we're just barely scratching the surface of this. Barely. You know, yeah. I think that uh, down the road, they're going to have so much more understanding. And it's so frustrating. I'm sure you get to test this too, because 
once you experience some of this stuff, it's like, you know, you want to go shake people like this is, you know, this, this is, is really possible. happening. You know, this is possible. We could all do this. You know, you want to go tell it on the mountain type of thing. Um, but so many people are just so, you know, focused in on their phones and, you know, what, what they, you know, the tactile experience of life and, and all yes. that. Yeah. But, you and, know, uh, I call it, um, you know, uh, again, back to mediumship, uh, like new wave mediums. I mean, on some level, everybody is psychic. Everybody is a medium on some level. But there's some of us who, who practice this and like a muscle are really good at it. Um, you know, and, and there's, there's really no rituals. I mean, I've, I've done some pretty darn amazing readings and connecting with the spirit world when I had a few cocktails in me. And a lot of people say, oh, no, you can't have alcohol because it, it's a depressant. I'm like, yeah, well, you know what? I've had some of the most profound moments, you know, in the hour of happy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I've tested myself, uh, but again, intention. There's times when I had to do readings hungover. That that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had I had I had 25 guinea pigs when I was doing my um, uh, certification for uh, um, angel angel certification, um, and I had to do readings for 25 people in all scenarios from good mood, bad mood, drunk, you know, hungover, sick, whatnot. And I'll tell you right now. You, you can be in the hour of happy, but hungover, no, no, no. Uh, sick, if you're not feeling well, you can still do it, but it's, the connection is not as strong. So the only scenario where, where our world, or, you know, I, well, I would say our world, we share the same world, um, will not work well is uh, when you're hungover. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, Daz, you know, Daz Smith, yeah. he, he talked about uh, being drunk on vodka and having a pretty good... Uh, CRV session actually so you know I've never tried it but you know that's I'm telling you retirement I'll be doing more experimenting so as a matter of <laughs> fact um just uh, recently we went to one of the breweries here in Charlotte and uh I just had a couple beers I was happy there was a lot of people and there was a peanut butter and jelly eating contest it was fun stuff what happens when well when I drink I get happy you know, I'm not saying I have, you know, like a, a you know, too many where I'm, I'm on the ground and I'm silly and, and falling asleep. That's different. But just like two, three, four cocktails or drinks at the most, happy, mm -hmm. happy. Um, happened yeah. to do readings for somebody there, you know, and, and they were just, they had um, just regular playing cards, you know. So I did reading using these cards, but these are just tools. You know, numbers mm -hmm. are just tools, cards crystals these are just tools but we are the strongest tool in the remote viewing and to dreaming in mediumship and again an intention you know i felt a pull to these girls behind me i'm like they need a reading turn around and i trusted the gut and all the insights you know and, and i'm like and it, it was pretty darn amazing and my poor husband um <laughs> I said, you know what, Michael, I have to do, he goes, what are you going to do now? I have to do a reading over you. He's like, okay, I'll be at the bar. I'm like, okay, you know, just, just, you know, keep an eye on my beer for me. And it was, it was amazing. It was, it was pretty good, you know, but, um, all right. So, uh, is there, uh, oh, you know what, I do want to share one other thing. Um, again, talking about water, um, again, um, after this, this, uh, you know, interview, if anybody can pull anything away from this information, it's intention. And, um, you know, uh, being able to uh, tap into things in our mind that we didn't think were possible because anything is possible if you put your mind to it. Um, but you have to trust your gut. And it takes a long time to learn discernment and that trust. Um, but, you know, when you share experiences like what, what you've had and, you know, when I, when I, what I shared, you know, how can you not want to try some of this stuff? Um, just the other day, you know, um, I was in, in the bathtub again you know, uh, Epsom salts and uh, a little sage oil and castor oil. This is, you know, again, uh, castor oil has tremendous healing properties. And I just sat in the tub just to detox. And, and it was the day, it was like, I don't know, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And I have a really short attention span. So, you know, I don't, I'm 10 minutes, 15 minutes at the most, and I'm out of the tub. You know, I'm not one of those that's laying in the tub for an hour into the water is ice cold. Anyway, so I'm in the tub and Eyes closed. I had no music. I, I had the door locked because one of my cats can open up the door. <laughs> I didn't want him in. And everything got really quiet. I had my eyes closed. Everything got, I mean, my mind was still. For once, my mind was still. Totally still. Not thinking about anything. And I think 
I don't even know. I mean, it had to be, it could have been a couple seconds. It could have been a couple minutes. For a short moment in time, I felt like time stood still. I couldn't feel anything. I couldn't hear my heartbeat. I couldn't sense myself breathing. I couldn't feel the tub that I was lying in. I couldn't feel the water. I couldn't feel anything. I felt um, like I was in a void in space, weightless. I didn't feel my body, like I was out of my body and somewhere else in time. Mm -hmm. It felt amazing. And um, I don't know where I was, but I was somewhere else other than in my bathtub. And um, next thing I knew, I took a really deep, because I think I stopped breathing for a little bit too, because I took a really deep inhale. And when I did that, my window shook, because I have um, acrylic uh, glass, glass block windows by, by the top. And when I took that inhale, it, the window cracked a little bit, as it does when it's windy outside, because it has to do with pressure. But it was a beautiful, sunny, blue day. There was no wind. And when I heard that window crack, you know, when I, when I took in that breath, it, it sent me back into my body. And I'm like, why did that window do that the same time I inhaled? And, and why did I inhale like that? I'm like, wait a minute, where was I? And as I was thinking these things in my mind's eye, my third eye, I see this purple cylinder right in front of me. Um, I'm not quite sure what it was, but I think it was just a connection uh, to where I was, to where I was, where I was in the tub, to where I was before, like a little travel, like on Star Trek, you know, the, the beam me up, Scotty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was kind of like that. And, um, it, and I'm like, wait a minute, what does this feel like? I did through the checklist and it felt amazing. It felt pure. And I felt like I went somewhere, but I can't prove it. And I have to be careful who I tell that story to, because <laughs> again, people are going to think I'm nuts. And this just happened, you know, just the end of the day. But after yeah. that, I'm telling you what, my, my senses sharpened just a little bit more because I started mm -hmm. seeing, I started seeing, I saw this beautiful orb in my room, you know, and, and it was the, the night, again, I couldn't sleep and it was big and it moved slowly. I'm looking at it and it had all these ge geometric things in, in the center. I'm like, okay, I need to slow down and try to figure out what is going on here. But something happened and I'm not quite sure. I don't find out. You know? Yeah, I think it's interesting that some people to me, it seems like some people, you know, we have this perceptual awareness, you know, we obviously there's some things that, that are going on. We just, we can't perceive it. You know, obviously there's wind and stuff like that. We, we don't see it, but obviously it's there. And I, I, it's hard to theorize. I mean, it, to me, it seems like some, some people's scope of perception may just be a little bit wider than the yeah. next, you know? And I mean, you look at, it's another theory, you know, some of these, some of these people that are, are schizophrenic, uh, for example, you know, that claim they see all these, you know, we don't know, you know what I mean? They, they could be seeing things we just don't see, you know, I mean? it's a possibility. Um, but, you know, you kind of have to think outside of the box like, a little bit, you know, a lot, and, and, a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and like I said, I mean, you know, it's just some of these experiences that like the bilocation stuff, I mean, I would have never believed it um had i not experienced it that's some of the stuff we messed around with esoteric stuff um you know targets that we don't really know et stuff like that and it got weird really quick uh <laughs> you know, like uh i'm like well you know i guess i mean i always had a sense that these things existed but i saw them in some remote viewing sessions being blind to the target and i'd be hard pressed to, to deny it now Ah, oh, you know what? I and I want to chat about that a bit. I was reading something. Um, there's a magazine, uh, Eight Martinis or something, right? Yeah, it's Daz's magazine. It's Daz's magazine. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of information in there, and when I can, I look a little bit into there. You know, as much as I can. But I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so over my head. But um, you know, uh, I remember um, reading a few things in there, and. Uh, you know, again, I'm still trying to, to find, you know, people to, I mean, remote viewing, again, you know, I'm, I'm not trained into it. I'm just barely, I guess, you know, barely touching the surface of it, but I'm, I'm, I'm reading more, but I'm still trying to find more people that, um, you know, can bilocate like this because I've done it three times. And, you know, so I know it's possible and I know it's going to be really beneficial um, in, in some way. You know, uh, whether it's remote viewing or to help people or to, I don't know. I'm just saying, if you, if you can be in two places at the same time, 
that that's a really good thing to and as a, as a matter of fact um i i split three okay this is gonna get a little weird guys you ready <laughs> split three times on uh, the last time i did a remote um uh, not remote view a by location uh, i split three times um here again my daughter was sick she's in college three and a half hours away from where i was at the time and she she has a really high uh, threshold of pain so when she says, mom, I, I, I'm sick, I'm like, oh my gosh, she's really sick. And she's like, I have a really high fever, I'm throwing up, well, you know, all, all those gross details. I'm like, I'm like, I can't, I need to be there. Here we go, intention. I, and as a mother, you know, really, really strong, I'm like, I need to be there. I'm like, is there anybody who can help you? She's like, no, I'm by myself. I'm like, oh my God, here's the anger. Here's the second thing. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm angry at myself, I can't be there. Um, she's sick, she has nobody to help her, so I have intention, I have anger, and that's all I needed to get to um, her dorm in, in just a heartbeat. So I went into one of my rooms and I said, you know, I had to calm myself down, just not to calm myself down, because that's what fueled this whole thing. Sat down on the bed, I'm like, okay, I need to be in her dorm. Next thing I know, I'm in her dorm, here again, my back was up against the door. I, when I bilocated that, that moment, I did not move. My back is always up against the door. I never moved from that location. However, I needed to because she was in, I saw her in her bed, sick as a dog, and I needed to get over to her so I can see what her deal was. So out from myself that was up against the door came another projection. And, but it wasn't my physical body. It was um, more like a, um, I don't want to say it. Well, yeah, I could say an angel. It was, it was like a, it was an energy. It was like a white energy moving. So here, not only am I freaking out at, in my physical body, but now my bilocated body is freaking out too, because I see this thing pop out of my chest and go over. So I'm like, I'm like oh my God, I'm like, what is going on? So I kind of stay here. And so this energy went over to her and um, here again, you know, my hand, but it wasn't, wasn't this type of hand, it was like a energy hand, felt her forehead burning hot. I'm like, oh my gosh, she has a fever, I have to heal her. Because I'm also a Reiki master teacher, comes in handy. Uh, so um, I'm like, I have to heal her, I have to make her better. So, um, you know, I pulled out, I just went over her body and I pulled out all this white, what looked like pus, and I just shook it out. So this white energy is over her doing this to pulling this from her body, like that echoplasm stuff that some mediums talk about, and I'm pulling it out and just dropping it. And next thing I know, she's lying down. This my second energy, this is crazy. I told you it was gonna get crazy, guys, right? But stay with me. Then this energy body is over her, completely parallel, like just this far from her body, and it was healing her. You know, it was yeah. a bright, bright white light, you know, healing her. And I, and, I, and I brushed her hair off from her, I you know, leaned down and I brushed her hair off her face. I felt her hair, I felt her clammy skin. And as, as my body was over hers, it was healing her. And then all of a sudden I know that, and this is just a matter of seconds, then all of a sudden that, that energy body popped back into me up against the door. I'm like, I'm like, all right, that was wild. Look back at her, I'm like, are we good? We're good. Then my bilocated body popped back into my physical body. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting too, because you've taken it another step further. Go ahead. Hold on one second. So, so I'm back in my room and I'm like, I'm like, okay, that was done. I wasn't impressed because I just did that. I was happy because I healed her. So it's not an ego thing. It is not ego. Because once you get into your mind and say, well, I can do this, is you're done. You're, you're done. So then, um, you know, I said, you know what, I'll just, and I, can't, I forgot about it. You know, I just said, just, that was cool, fine. What about my day? Then uh, the next morning, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, when I knew she would wake up, I'm like, how do you, I text her, how do you feel? She goes, I feel great. I go, you feel great? You were, you were thrown up, you had a high fever. I go, a fever? She's like, no, she goes, I have a slight headache still, a little hungry. I'm like, well, that's good, you're hungry. I go, but you feel good? She goes, yeah, I feel good. Thanks, mom. I'm like, you're welcome. <laughs> so there you go. A, tri a triple split. Never did that one before. What, what because I, when I've bilocated, like I said, you take it another step further, I get into that spot and I'm just basically watching. You know, I can't, I wasn't able to do much else, you know, but, but watch what was going on around me. I tried to kind of move myself around, but I, I couldn't. I was just basically static, you know. Um, 
But yeah, so that's interesting. You were able to project yourself from that projection, you yeah. know, from that, that location. Um, and like you said, like initially, you're like, I don't know if I could, you know, do it or whatever, but you did it. You know, you ended up doing it. I never said, uh, that, that I, I never know. I, I, I don't know if I can, because as soon as you say that, you, you're done. You, you know, you, you're, you're done. I said, I need to. I need to get over there. So maybe next time somebody bilocates, I never thought of trying to move. You know, I just knew, I just, I just was not able to, but apparently, apparently you can. So mm -hmm. yeah. put that in your pipe and smoke it. So not only yeah. can you bilocate, but, but you can move. Yeah. It's fascinating. Fascinating stuff. Yeah. So you know what? Um, and we have to get going because I think you're yeah, coming up on an hour. Um, that uh, this is a fascinating world, remote viewing, the paranormal. Um, you know, we're not special people. We're not gifted. Anybody can do this, but you have to have intention. You have to say, you know what? Not, can I do this? I can do this. You know, you have to have that desire, that intention, but you have to be ready. I think earlier you said, you know, some days you're like, mm, you know, I feel off. On the days you're like, you know what? I want to do something today. Just trust the way you feel and um, just make it happen. You know, Absolutely. Just, and just, yeah. Just all right. So, did you uh, did you want to say anything else, David? Before we go, do you have any websites or or anything that you have that that is about remote viewing or anything that you do? That you want um, I I I would promote people to um, not not me personally, but um, read read books on the subject. John Herlowski uh, wrote a great book um, called The Sorcerer's Apprentice, talking about his time in extended remote viewing. Hmm. Um, from David Morehouse, who was one of the original army guys that came up with the techniques, you know, from the original crew of guys. Um, Paul H. Smith has a course, RBIS. Lori Williams, out, obviously, intuitive specialist. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I would advise people to look into it. Um, we, we are more than what we appear to be. That's right. We are amazing machines. We just know how to work ourselves. <laughs> we need to learn how to work ourselves. <laughs> exactly. All right, David. Um, thank you for so much for joining me. I could have gone on for another hour, but, you know. <laughs> no, thank you. It was great. It was yeah. great talking. All right, guys. Um, again, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, thank you for joining Spirit Chats with Donna Frasca. If you want to find out more about me, you can, um, I mean, again, I have dual careers from color to the cosmos, I say. The color part is decoratingbydonna.com, um, but the more fun side is angelhub234.com. And guys, remember, when, when you chat with Spirit, um, Spirit always wants to connect with us, whether it's um, in our consciousness or dreams, um, in the spirit world, but you have to listen. You have to, oh, I just got chills when I'm saying this. They're like, yeah, yeah, you're right, Don, you're right. <laughs> so, um, you know, guys, just, just stay sensitive and, um, you know, dig deep into your chakras and your clairs. You know, those, those two things are vital for this type of work. Because uh, once you, you, you know what your chakras do and how they work, and if your body's out of balance, get it back in balance, back on, on, on how your, your uh, ch chakras are making your body feel. And those clairs, clairvoyance, clairsentience, just look into those clairs. Those are the only tools you really need. Yeah, it's good to take classes, you know, I, I, I mean, remote viewing, of course, you know, but your basic stuff, dig into the stuff that you're drawn to, whether it's lucid dreaming, remote viewing, anything in the paranormal world. The more you set your intention um, to the things that you desire, the stronger you get. You're a muscle, keep working it. All right, guys. Again, thank you for uh, joining me, David Powell. It's excellent. And um, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. All right, guys. Bye-bye.